In this video, I will present Arrow's impossibility theorem and sketch a proof of it. Informally, Arrow's theorem asserts that there is no fair way to aggregate individual preferences into a group preference. Slightly more precisely, when there are at least three alternatives, any group preference must be at least one of the following. 1. Non-unanimous, which means that the group preference may differ from all individual's preferences, even though all these preferences are actually the same. 2. Dependent of irrelevant alternatives. The group may prefer x to y when considering z, but switch its preference between x and y simply by now considering z. 3. Dictatorial. There is an individual whose preference determines the preference of the group. Arrow's theorem asserts that you cannot avoid one of these three bad conditions when you're designing a group preference. For this reason, Arrow's theorem has been regarded as a major difficulty in social choice theory, that is, the theory of how to make a collective decision based on possibly diverging preferences of the members of the collective. Now, from now on in this video, what I will do is to state Arrow's theorem formally. So we consider a set N of electors from 1 to N and a set M of alternatives. We assume that each elector has a preference over alternatives, which is described by a strict order relation over the set M of alternatives. Denoting O the set of order relation and theta in O a preference, we can fully describe theta by a permutation of the alternatives of the form theta prefers x1 to x2 to x3 and so on until xm, where the x1 to xm are all different alternatives of m. Then a social aggregation of individual preferences is a function f that goes from o to the power n to o, which aims at summing up the possibly diverging individual preferences into a group preference. Such a social aggregation is said to be unanimous when for all preference profiles theta equals to theta1 until theta n, such that according to theta i, x is better than y, that is, electors unanimously prefer x to y, then the group preference f of theta must put x ahead of y, that is, the group prefers x to y. We say that f is independent of irrelevant alternatives if the relative order of x and y does not depend on how other alternatives z1 until zm-2 are ranked. More precisely, given two preference profiles theta equals to theta1 until theta n and tau equals to tau1 until tau n, if x and y are ranked by theta and tau identically, i.e. for all i in n, theta i prefers x to y if and only if tau i prefers x to y, then f of theta and f of tau must rank x and y identically as well, i.e. f of theta must put x ahead of y if and only if f of tau does the same. Finally, we say that f is dictatorial if there is a dictator k in n, such that the group preference is defined to be the preference of the dictator k, i.e for all theta in on, f of theta must be the preference of theta k. So hopefully now you have all the elements to perfectly understand at least the formal statement of our theorem, which I recall asserts that if there are at least three alternatives, then no social aggregation is simultaneously unanimous, independent of irrelevant alternatives, and non-dictatorial. Or as I prefer to say it, the only social aggregation that's both unanimous and independent of irrelevant alternatives is dictatorship.